All right, do you see on your screen right now the, the white screen that has all the buttons on it? Yes. All right. <clears throat> I don't know, I'm gonna ask you to do something and it might be way over and above what you think you can do or want to do. But what I would like you to do is, um, you, can, you can either use what I gave you as a starting point or you can grab what I've given you and copy it into yours, it doesn't matter. But hopefully at least, we now have the show customer stuff done. In other words, we've got done the insert customer, we've, done, we've got done the update customer, and we've got done the delete customer. So using those as a template, I would like you to see if you can do the same thing with the category. And remember, category is easy. It really is because there's only one there's, there's only one field in it that you have to worry about, and that's category description. So, I mean, it's not like you've got all this validation that you have to do, et cetera, that we talked about before. So I'd like you to try to do that one, and I'd like you to try to do the, the so the three for the category and the three for the product. Now, you may or may not remember this, so I'm going to show it to you as soon as I can find it. There it is. You should be able to right now see on your screen, this is the, uh, again, this is the schema for the entire database. So we've done this one. I'm asking you to do this one. And since we really don't care, we, since we really don't care about the ID, the only field you have in that one is the category description. All right, I've already created the forms for you. If you don't like mine, you can go back and create yours, but this one is gonna make you work a little more. All right. And that's the product. It's gonna, you're gonna set it up very similar to the way that I set it up for the customer, but it, instead of things like first name, last name, address, city, state, zip, you'll have product name. This product description that's in here, this long one and this, this image, there's nothing in any of those. So you don't even have to worry about you doing anything with them unless you want to. All right. But you'll have to worry about getting a product name, getting a product short description, uh, getting a product price, getting a product quantity, and a category ID. All right. So I would like you to see if you can go in and at least start, start with the categories one and see if you can create the code for inserting a category. Now, one thing that's a little bit different with a category, you probably should do a check in there to make sure that the category isn't already in there. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you've got a category of bicycles, you shouldn't let a person put another bicycles in there for a category. All right, and if we can get all this done, now if I, if I have time, I'm gonna to try to do these two and then just give them to you. If I don't have time, we won't do them. That's no big thing one way or the other. But I hopefully what I wanted you to get out of this is I mean, you're putting in some pretty heavy code. I'm gonna go back and for the customer one, I'm going to see if I can move the stuff that I was talking about into the helper, all right? And then I'm going to give you, you know, uh, I'm going to ask that you not even turn this in until a week from Friday, the first. All right. But I'm going to give you the rest of the period today. Tomorrow we will get together and I'm just going to ask you how it's going. And if you say, you know what, I, I got the, I got the, um, the product or the category one done, but I'm really struggling with the other one, then we'll talk about how you would do that. Otherwise, I'm just going to give you all period tomorrow and all period Thursday to work on this. Then Friday, which is the 24th, I believe, I'm going to go over chapter 23. We're going to talk about um, link, and we're going to add another form to this project, which will allow us to run queries and to use some of the built in database functionality. What I'm having you do is you are literally hard coding 
a lot of the stuff that next week what I'd like to do is to show you how we can automate a lot of this stuff. Is, does, is what I'm saying make any sense to, to you guys? Yes. yes. All right. So like I said, I will be on for the rest of the morning. But that's this is it as far as the lecture today. So please start with this one. All right. You may or may not know this. I'm going to stop my share and give you a new share in just a second. Um, let's see. Bring that up. And I'm going to bring up. All right. So let's see. Now I'm probably going to end up going back and forth between shares here, just so you know. But right here, there, I've already created for you the category update form. So when you do the drop down here for the updates, this should show you the six categories. Let's say you let's just assume that we called it bikes and we decide we want to change it to bicycles. That's the kind of thing you would do right here. And then you'll have to write the code, but you it's going to be virtually the same kind of code that we wrote to update a customer. All right. And in the same way, and again, I'm probably do you did did your can you see the green category insert form on your screen? Yes. Okay. So there's the in, the insert again. Pretty simple. All right, and you'll be able to do the same thing. And there, hopefully, you can see the red delete. All right. And I believe I've even created the ones. I don't know if I did for product or not. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. I don't know if you can see that on your screen right now, but there is a product insert form. There is a product update form, and there is a product delete form, all right? Again, that's going to be very similar in nature when you do that to, to what, what I just did for customer, all right? So you know what I'm asking you to do. Again, if you have if you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you're getting weird errors, all right. Now, one last thing. I was thinking about this during the break. Shows you what kind of mind I have, I guess. But as an example, let's say that I run the program right now and I bring up this product update form. First of all, notice it's an update form that shouldn't say delete. It should say update. So that's screwed up to begin with. All right. So. Since it's an update form, that button right there, instead of saying delete record, of course, should say update record. All right, like that. All right. But when you think about it, my guess is the program would either lock up, blow up, or not know how to react. I shouldn't be able to update a record until this is filled up. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So you should disable that button until this is filled up. And that goes for the update and that goes for the delete. I don't want to bring up a blank form here and click delete because it really, it doesn't make sense. It might even tell you that it's going to do the update or the delete, but that doesn't make any sense. So what you should do is you should make sure when that form opens up that the update button and the delete button on both of those are disabled. And all the only, the only thing you have to do is click on it. You can do it in code or you can come down to here into your properties and find the enabled property. And it says true, double click on it and it becomes false. So you can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. All right. Keegan, Angie, any questions on what I'm asking you to do? No. No. All right. So we will, I will be online. If, if one of you comes up with a question or if you both have the same question, then I'll, I'll say, hey, 
you know, I'll just answer it and I'll get back on with you guys. All right. Otherwise, I will be here at 8.05 tomorrow. I will start and see, you know, did you make any progress? Did you get the categories one done? And hey, let's just assume you do. So let's assume in the rest of the period today, you get the category one done. And let's assume that tomorrow, you know, you, you know, in the first half of the period or so, you get the product one done. Then go on and try to do the orders and the order details. All right. And I mean, again, maybe I'm wrong with this, but I don't think I am. I think this is this is pretty impressive. It's a pretty impressive thing for you to put in. Now you might have uh you might go in, let's let's just assume it's a year from now, and Keegan, you're going in for a job interview for a C sharp programmer. And your boss says, well, why did you do all this stuff? You can automate it. Yeah, we did. You can just tell me, yeah, we did that also during the last week of class. But our instructor really wanted us to see kind of behind the scenes what goes on here. So we, we built it manually first just to see how it works. So while you guys are doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, going back to the customer stuff, if I can move all those validation routines, et cetera, if I move them all into that helper method or that helper class, if this still works, all right? So unless I, unless I get a question from one or both of you that I feel that I've got to get together with you, that's it until tomorrow, all right? Talk to you then. Thanks. Thank you.